Hello Sheraton, happy Wednesday. I feel like it's been forever since I was last on a video to you here on Facebook and it's really only been a week. What a week, so much stuff gets packed into the end of the school year, right? So this week, our special project is called Seed in a Jar, and I gave you a sneak peek of that last week when we did our rain cloud, and or maybe that was two weeks ago, but here is my seed in a jar this week. So these have been growing for approximately two weeks, and you can see they're even a little bit moldy, but of course that's not a problem for seeds. And I think what I will do with these is take them home and put them in some dirt. As you can see the root systems in here. Some of them have grown more than others. The angle at which they grow has been really interesting. This bean seed doesn't seem to be very happy. Um, it's got some roots, but it hasn't done much of anything else. So I'm, And these paper towels are still wet with the original water, so it's not something that I have watered or done anything with. I just put it in these windows right here next to my desk that actually don't get a lot of sunlight through them because they've got those blinds in them. But this is, this is the result. And so this is what you guys are doing this week. You have a seed and the, uh, you have um, a few pea seeds and a few bean seeds and the paper towels in the jar and the instructions. This is super, super easy. And, um, and you should get something like this and then you'll be able to plant those outside or in a pot. Uh, remember that peas and beans both tend to be trailing plants. So I'm, they um, think about Jack and the Beanstalk. Oh no, I just broke my little beanstalk. But if you think about Jack and the Beanstalk, there's lots of little curly cue things and little tendrils that, that wrap around things. So as you are growing your little beanstalks, um, you will want to give it something to grow on. So um, like a tomato cage or some kind of fence or something along those lines. And then you'll have more success with your plants if you continue to grow them beyond the jar stage. So have fun with that. Also, I hope you enjoyed the rain cloud in a jar. We had a lot of fun with that and I actually let ours sit for this whole week. It's been sitting on the table and the shaving cream has kind of into almost nothing, but it's still sealing the water and the water has gotten cloudy and the blue on top of the shaving cream has gotten really, really dark. So that's been kind of fun to watch. I wanted to share a story with you this morning. It's called, And Then Comes Summer. So I'm gonna read a story. And then we also have lots of events coming up, lots of things for us to do coming up this summer. And I'm finalizing some prizes and summer reading program details uh, today and on Friday. And then next week, we should be able to announce all of those details. And then June 1st is when summer reading programs start. So it's almost here. It's almost time for summer. I can't believe it. And so that's why we're going to read this book. And then comes summer by Tom Brenner, illustrated by Jamie Kim. When the days stretch out like a slow yawn and leaves and grasses sparkle with dew and the cheerful faces of Johnny jump ups jump up. When bumblebees bumble around in flowers and warblers flit from tree to tree and the air thrums with the sound of lawn mowers. Then pump up your bike tires, dig out your helmet and raise your seat. My, how you've grown. When the last class project is finished and your cubby is cleaned of cookie crumbs and eraser bits and the end of the year hugs have been given. Then swap out backpacks and notebooks for pitchers and cups. When daylight pushes back bedtimes and crickets creak creak in the evening air and bugs as big as thumbs bang against windows, then play hide and seek until darkness wins. When stores unfurl the stars and stripes and flags wave from porches and cars and the whole town seems wrapped up in bunting, then dress up your bike and pedal to the parade. Let's see for the picture. When bands march by, left, right, left, right, and all manner of floats float past, and scouts and pioneers toss candy. 
Then grab your blanket and watch the night explode in colorful sprays. When every day is like a Saturday and porches and lawns and sidewalks are playgrounds and a familiar jingle interrupts the game, then race to be the first in line. Almond fudge, please. Have any of you ever seen an ice cream truck or heard the jingle? When the dog days of summer roll around and it's so hot you're practically panting and not even the sprinklers provide relief, then it's time to head to the lake. Roll down the window and smell the hot dry grass. Shout your favorite songs at birds swooping across fields and ask for the millionth time, are we there yet? But actually your grown-ups don't want you to ask that question. When the familiar sign appears at last and the silver lake winks through the trees and old friends run to greet you, then scramble out of the car, dash down to the beach, and swim till the sun is low and your lips are blue. And when dinner is over and stories have been told and your fingers are sticky with marshmallow and chocolate and the fire burns down to glimmering coals, then snuggle into your sleeping bag and plan tomorrow's adventures. Lots of fun things about summer in this book, and there's more too. So I would love some time for you to come and tell me what it is you love most about summer. What are the things that you're most looking forward to, especially now that most of the things that we enjoy are going to be okay again. We can do most of the things again. So enjoy these last two weeks of school. Grown-ups, enjoy these last two weeks of school. And I cannot wait to see you again next week for our final mason jar craft. And then we'll jump into our summer reading program and summer reading program crafts and events and prizes and all those amazing things. So have a great day and I will see you later at the library.